What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show, Be The Trader. Today, we're doing another trader therapy session. I got your boy, Jack Kellogg here, and also Kyle Williams. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us back. Oh, absolutely. What's going on, man? Not much. So just let everyone know who's listening in. We're going to kind of have a formatted show this time, so that way you know what's happening. We're going to first kind of discuss each with each other how the month has been so far, any challenges we might be facing, or celebrate some accomplishments. And then the second portion is going to be answering your questions that you either sent us on Twitter or Instagram. So that's coming up next. And then if we have time, we'll talk about another topic. So with that all being said, let's just get started. So, I mean, really, how's I can get things rolling. I mean, the month so far for me has been actually really fucking good. I fucking, I've, been, I've been really stoked about my month. Uh, I've been swinging all since, since Friday, man. I've been swinging. Swinging all all kinds of plays like Apple, Tesla, and yeah, bigger, UIND. Bigger price, higher price. Yeah, yeah. I've been really yeah. focusing on those lately, and it's been That's what's uh, been hot, man. Yeah, it's been really hot. It's been really yeah. hot. What about you guys? Do you want to go, Jack, or do you want me to go? Uh, I'll kick it off. Okay. I mean, my month's been pretty good so far. Um, I've only had two red days, and that was both Mondays. So this Monday and the Monday before, and I, that was only because I kind of like came in to the week and I just kind of slapped everything and wasn't really meticulous with my entries and what time I was buying and all that stuff. So that's something that I want to work on for the next few weeks is kind of just going into Mondays being a lot more calmer and not like so needy to trade. But other than that, I've been cutting my losses super quick this month, nice. whereas I don't even really let them go against me at all. I've been getting a lot of, I probably have like 20 trades that are just in between like zero and a hundred dollars. And you know, those would technically be losses if I held on to them and let them stop me out of my risk. But a lot of my longs, I just, I haven't even been giving them the time of day to test my stop. If I'm not liking the action, I'm stopping out immediately. Yeah. So that's something I want to continue to do because I'm seeing great consistency in my month. And then a few other things is I've been shorting a little bit more with Kyle. Some of these shorting plays when the OTCs are slower and I'm still hitting some of my OTCs when they set up correctly long and short. Yeah, that's, that's awesome, man. Me. That's awesome. I, you know, now you make me feel like a dick because I didn't even talk about what I need to work on because I definitely got to work on some things. <laughs> 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 no but uh but that's awesome man but the mondays and kyle you're welcome to to time chive in here but the monday thing for me what i've noticed for myself mondays are my worst days they're my worst days period th throughout history uh yeah. is, is that you or or is there a day like that for y'all um i i've seen like there's been times where like every monday i've lost money but i haven't some Mondays I do make money. So it's, I, I think, I think I lose money on Mondays. Mondays when I come in a little bit too eager, like it's like, yeah, new week, like let's get it started off. And you kind of pressure yourself to start like, you know, making something happen versus if there's actually something happening. So I think that's usually when my Mondays are losses, when I feel eager, when I feel patient and like in control, then they're not losses. That's how usually that works for me. So. Yeah, that makes sense. I think yeah. I feel like it's the same for me, but man, it's, it's really hard to slow down on Mondays. It's really hard because you're like, yeah. Now, Martin Luther King Day, so we're not going to be trading. So, yeah, we'll hopefully, we don't pile yep. that on Tuesday. <laughs> the good thing is, though, I got I got a good swing trade going on on this uh, penny stock, so I should start out the month with the a gain or the week. Sorry, should start the week off with a gain. So that kind of I want to use that to kind of have my mindset be in the right spot, so I don't over trade. Start it off right, you know. Oh yeah, that always feels good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we're going for for my month. How my month's going so yeah. far? Um, Jack so already gave me a I got He's smiling. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the first the first um, two weeks were really really good because it kind of just the market continued. So so I guess I should go back to December. December it felt really really I traded really really well, and uh, I won like I think it was like eighty something percent of the time. Let me look at Damn. which was like the highest winner I've ever had. Yeah, 80, exactly 80%, which is like, I don't think I've ever had that high of a win rate that consistently over a period of a month. And so I got that same exact feeling in like 
momentum going into January. The first two weeks were really, really awesome. And then this week, I got just absolutely ripped apart. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm still green in the week, uh, only up for like 500 bucks. But uh, I took more losses this week alone than I did in all of December. Um, so definitely a much more roller coaster of a ride this week. The market's definitely kind of changed a little bit. Still like plenty of plays, but like today, uh, MNK and NK. Um, I mean, you couldn't have paid me to make money on those those stocks today. I just, I just, it was bound, bound to lose on them. So it just happens. But I just have to, you know, keep sticking to my edge, and the easier plays will come around like they did in, in uh, December and the beginning of January. So. Why do you think that was happening, though? Just is it just because you were overconfident, or? Um, I mean, I or... definitely, I definitely have taken a much more conscious and focused um, effort to increase my size, and so I'm, I'm trying to figure out whether I was just increasing my size um, in general across all plays, or I felt like I needed to be more aggressive on just any play that showed up, um, which happened today be the ones that I probably shouldn't have gone more aggressive on, you know. Um, so I'm kind of trying to still figure out how I'm going to handle taking bigger size on what, because to me, you know, the chart of MNK looks great. Like it looks, the daily chart looks exactly like I would want a runner to look, but then you get to the intraday chart and it's like, this thing's just a choppy mess, you know? Um, so it was much more difficult to kind of like pull out a decent size profit from that kind of the intraday chart. Um, so I'm just kind of have to figure out, you know, what are maybe the more ideal setups that I will like absolutely push size on and like feel that uncomfortability of like taking a bigger loss and what are some that I need to just not increase size on and just keep taking my singles from there. Um, Cause today definitely those NK, NK and MNK were definitely trades that I probably should have just taken my gap, my pedal or my, my ball off the pedal for sure. So. Gotcha. So I don't know. I've always just me personally, I'm because I'm still working on my own trading, but that being said, like I found, What's your what's your thoughts on like just stick with one size for every every trade as long as it's your your setup right so that way yeah that way it all equals out like at the yeah end, in the uh, end. um I used to I used to do that a lot um, the only reason why I changed is because I quickly realized um, that even though it might be the same setup right it still might be a first red day on an overextended you know mm-hmm. supernova or it might be you know a um, a you know breakout if people break breakouts. But I've learned there's just so many other indicators that can like stack up with that setup that can make it good or bad. Like there could still be a breakout, but it doesn't have a catalyst. Like, okay, then it's not as good. There could still be an overextended runner, but it might actually have legit good news. Then in that, in that case, it's like, okay, it can still pull back because it's just overdone. But if it has good news, the 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 first red day might not be as big as if a stock was up for complete, you know, BS, you know. So there was just too many I, I just saw too many indicators that could show whether a a setup was like really really good like perfect or if it was still a setup but it wasn't as ideal as it could have been um so for that reason i've started to like you know and the size i take doesn't dramatically change but if it's absolutely ideal like i will absolutely be comfortable taking size maybe pushing size like taking a loss that i've never taken before that's bigger because it's just that ideal and i'm willing to do that versus i'm not going to take that kind of a size on something that just isn't as doesn't have everything stacked up with it that kind of thing that makes sense. So. That makes sense. It's like if everything checks the boxes, then why not? I mean, it makes sense. You, the yeah. edge is really on your side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, was, I was actually talking to Brian Lee just, I think it was on Wednesday, and he was talking about how I should start using the, you know how he does the compound strategy where he's like, mm-hmm. I'll risk 1% or 2% yeah, one and then R, every time. Yeah. Yep. But he keeps on increasing it every time. So like if you're, let's say you have a $30,000 account, and you win three hundred dollars. Now you have thirty, you know, three dot thirty grand, three hundred. Yeah, now you risk yep. three hundred and three, or yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking about doing that now because it's hard for me to increase size, like because I'll just like pick a number, like all right, let me increase now instead of risking two hundred dollars, let me risk three hundred, and then instead of risking three hundred, let me do four hundred. But this way, you're kind of like easing into it, and then it helps you with your drawdowns too. Yeah, totally, definitely. What about you, Jack? You feeling good over there? Yeah. Um, for this topic, for me, on like a lot of my longs, it's kind of hard to increase size because sometimes there's just not like the liquidity there to move the kind of size that I want to and get out where I want to. So a lot of my longing has to do with um, just like a fixed dollar risk, just like one, two hundred dollars and just kind of give myself like that break even spot where, you know, I can make five hundred to a thousand on a good trade. 
and cut my losers really quick for either break even or one to two hundred dollar loss. And that's kind of what I do on my longs on the OTCs. And then for shorting on NASDAQ, I think it's a lot more of a what kind of size should we be taking? Where should your ideal entry be? It's just a lot more of a, a science with that, I think. And I think what Kyle was saying is very good. And I think that you should be have a fixed dollar risk for every kind of sh different short setup out there rather than, you know, OTC longs. I think it should just be whatever kind of size you can move in and out fairly quickly without taking slippage. Uh, that makes sense. You know, I, I, you know, some things I want to work on just to go off of what you were saying earlier, Jack, is just basically what I've been doing this whole month and in December was not looking at P&L till the end of the month and not even uploading any of my trades till the end of the month. And I tell you guys, for me, too, that's helped me dramatically. It's helped me dramatically in terms of being able to flip your bias, in terms of being able to, you know, enter a trade and cut it like how you were mentioning, Jack, earlier on our last episode, how you would enter a trade and then you're okay with cutting it real quick if it's not looking right. If it's not hitting your, and then if it re-triggers, you'll enter again. Like being able to not look at it and focus on my profit loss on a daily, weekly has enabled me to be able to be okay with, because I don't, I'm not paying attention to, oh, this, that's a loss. That's a loss. I'm just like, okay, next trade. And then even with the winners, like, same thing, like next trade, because I got, oh, I'll get overconfident where I'll just start trading because I'm doing really well, so I have more money to risk, and that's what's been helping me. So I'm going to continue to do that for the rest of the month and really focus on the swing strategy I've been working on. I'm doing that on my big, my uh, other account. I have two accounts, a long term and a short term. I'm doing it on that one, and eventually, if it can, does really well at the end of the month, I'm hoping that I can uh, transition that into my main account. That's my day trading and swinging. So that's my plan right now. Cool. Things are going well. I'm just praying about it and just, just trying to stay focused. And uh, yeah, so I appreciate you sharing sharing what you guys are sharing too because it, it helps it helps me and I'm sure it helps a lot of people out there. It's really yeah, cool. Totally. I uh, I tried, I, I like that idea because for most traders, definitely hiding your PNL sh certainly like helps a lot. I remember, I remember hiding it or like trying to hide it the problem is all I could think about when I was hiding it was just doing the math in my head. Like I knew if I was like short a thousand shares, I'm like, okay, I'm down 800 right now or I'm down. All right, down 200. Oh, I'm up 200. Like I just I would do it in my head so much to the point where I was like, dude, this isn't helping me. So just most people, I think it would help. So I definitely think every trader should test that out and try that. But for me, it's like, I, and I, I either can just look at one, look at my PL calculating it for me, like every other, like win it. Or I end up just rapid firely calculating every tick, and it's like I don't need to do that. So it's all about what works for best for you. Absolutely, absolutely. Is there anything else you guys want to jump on before we maybe start answering some questions? I'm ready for some questions. I go. agree with Kyle about the uh, the P and L thing. It's just I've tried to do it with hiding my unrealized before, but I'm just way too. I don't know if it's the kind of the Sykes community or just like where we come from, but I'm so fixated on like the money and like how it's moving around in my account that like I can't mentally like handle not knowing how much I'm up or down because yeah you know I kind of make I will make decisions based on how much I'm up or down you know if I'm up 500 and it's starting to not look good you know I'm selling that's just mm -hmm. like kind of my personality and if it's you know if I can still get out of this trade for a negative $40 loss like why am I going to wait if it's not looking good right now why am I going to wait to take a bigger loss when it goes and breaks my risk that's just kind of how I do it because I'm, I'm a lot more feel and that's kind of yeah. what OTCs are and with NASDAQ it's a lot more I feel like you have to stick to this because there's so much market manipulation and all this you know board uh bullshit yeah, and much all more this stuff. Choppy. yeah yeah. No, I, like, yeah I see that I see what you're saying because I come from Sykes too and I, and I see that what you're saying but I think I think I mean everyone's a little different like you said Kyle at the beginning everyone's different but I also think that um the fact that you can do that and not and not be frustrated like say you know what, it's 40 bucks i'm out and then it reverses and goes back towards the other direction and then you because you usually just jump right back in if i can remember correctly like if it's going to re-trigger for you yeah. um i wasn't able to do that if i saw my p l and then i cut it for a 40 dollar loss and then it went towards my direction i'll just be so frustrated and pissed that that happened so for me it helps me because i'm not thinking about what did i lose I'm just mm -hmm. going forward. So it's cool how it's just different for everyone. So I like that you guys are open to sharing about that. Mm -hmm. Totally. 
the uh so the first question real quick and, and let me ask you guys is it lagging to y'all a little it's bit not, man. okay i can so hear you guys first, clearly yeah first question is from walia pranavov and i'm gonna mispronounce probably everything on here so <laughs> just let you guys know <laughs> so some of these questions are very generic very just we're gonna have to kind of guess and that's okay so it says the do's and don'ts of trading is his question. What are the do's and don'ts of trading? Okay. Yeah, so that's very, very that's yeah, exactly very broad. But yeah, there's there's plenty that we can talk about. Uh the first thing that I comes to my mind is, you know, don't trade with money. There's a don't you know, don't trade with money that you're not willing to lose. Like if you if you open up a five thousand dollar account and you need half that money next month, you shouldn't be opening a five thousand thousand dollar account. You know, it's it, it, you, you you know, and maybe that's why I'm okay with looking at my P and L because I'm so open and 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 you know vulnerable and like to losing the money that I have. You know what I mean? Like it's it's this is what it's for. It is for nothing else. I don't plan on pulling it out. I try to keep my money in my account as much as I possibly can. Any money out of my account is totally for living. Like they're completely there's a massive wall between my you know, actual bank account and my trading account. Um. So that's definitely a don't, you know, do not trade with money you can't afford to lose. Um, terms of do, uh, I think you got to just study your ass off. <laughs> like Maybe it's yeah, a do and a don't, don't not study, like <laughs> do study, don't not study. Like you have to literally, you know, like people, I think people join trading because it's something that you don't have to do a nine to five and, and you have all this free time. But I think that free time comes after you've already put in like 60, 80 hour weeks, like, you know, people join because they wanted to work less than 40. But I think the first year, two, three years, like you're putting in more than 40. Um, it really comes to like your four, your five, where I could see then, you, okay, you can put in 20 hours a week and make, you can, at that point, you have enough, big enough size, you can trade, you can take one trade a day and make, you know, a whole week's worth of, of profit and then just do what you want. But when you're first starting, like it is not, um, it is not a easy 20, 30 hour work week. It's like 40, 50 more you know if you're passionate so. about it you're it's probably still yeah like you that. want to do it <laughs> it's fine, yeah you like, it, like it's kidding. not a problem like you'll do it exactly so that's for me yeah I, I, i'll just go off of that the do's the only thing i would say i'll say do is um stick to your plan man you gotta stick to your plan so you know one of the biggest things is we'll all make a plan or pre-market watch list but then we'll see that one ticker that comes out of nowhere in the lot like one minute before the open and it just like spikes like crazy and how often is, you know, most people just jump in that right away without even having a plan. So stick to your plan because those are the ones, if you stick to your plan, more times than not, you will be right. And if you're not right, you're going to at least have consistency of sticking to the plan and have data to back that up and understand, you know, how you can improve. And don't is, I would say, like, I, I really like what you said earlier, Kyle, and that is, I mean, don't expect it to be easy, really. Like, you're going to have to study, you're going to have to work your butt off and, and I, I, I got into training because I thought it was easy. I thought it was quick. I thought it was going to be like, oh, yeah, oh me too. no totally. problem. I got this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not no problem. It is, it is yeah. hard. It is hard work, right. but it is so fun. And it is so if you have passion behind it, dude, you, you'll freaking love it. And you'll know right, like, you have passion behind it. You'll know. Like you said, like once you – like I, I joined it because I thought it was going to be very smooth and like easy. And, but like if you love it that shift from thought it would be easy to how realizing how hard it was, wasn't difficult. Like I was like, okay, well I, I enjoy this even more now. So I'll just work harder. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't like, Oh, I have to work hard now. Like it wasn't like that at all. You know, but I did think of another, another don't, which was um, when you first start out, don't trade big size. Like the, literally, I think the single best thing you could do when you first start out is trade with so small that it is like insignificant when you lose money. Like if you lose like $5 because your size is so small, especially now with free commissions, like free commissions, you're not going to be bleeding your account dry. Um, but like I see so many traders, they first starting out and they're like, yeah, I wanted to make like a thousand dollars a day. So I bet my whole account and I'm like, Oh my God. Like I just cringe. You know what I mean? Um, just do not take big size. Take like probably the smallest size you could possibly ever take in the beginning. That's really when you should be taking the small size you're ever taking, but it's the opposite for everyone else, you know. All right, I have one do and one don't. My go. one do is find friends. Find people that are also doing this journey with you because it's super lonely and you, you don't really have a lot of people to talk to. Your family and friends probably don't really understand it. So, you know, network, talk to people, 
you know, try to grow with people if they're doing this and it, it's working well for them. Try to have them show you what they're doing and try to figure out things together because, you know, the saying two brains is better than one. And then my don't is don't fucking bag hold shitty ass penny stocks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's a great oh, one. Gosh. That's a great one. That's a great one. Yeah. Uh, so, um, don't be a bag holder. Don't be a bag holder. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Like, know what you trade. Like, if you're short, if you're trading small caps, like, there should be no belief in any of these companies. Like, if you're holding the bag here, you you know, that's a big no no for sure. This next question is actually. Um, let me let me make sure I answer someone else's question first. But this next, I I want to answer this question. This is a great question. I think your personal experience. Personal experience. What kept you motivated even after losses? It, anyone want to take this first? Because I'm happy to take it. I I got something. All right, go you, or you can go too. Um, repeat go the question real quick. Make sure I get it right. Uh, so I'm from personal motivated. experience, what kept you motivated even after losses? Um. I think it's, I think there's a quote. It's like, if you want to take the island, burn the boats, right? Like if yep. you like the island being profitable trading, um, you know, I, I was very fortunate to have a good relationship with my parents where I could stay with them and like really reduce my spe- expenses when I first started out trading. But, um, but logically in my mind, I kind of put myself in a different space where I was like, no, no, I can't afford not to make this work. Right. Like I would, after losses, I'd kind of put that that almost where almost fear was a good thing where I put that doubt and be like, well, if this doesn't work, what would I do? And just the thought of having to do something else that didn't excite me as much as trading did was, was such a a massive fear. And I was like, there's no way I'm not, not going to do this. Right. Like I'm, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get here and keep going. Cause the alternative of, of staying on the boat or drowning, right. If you burn the boats, it's like, there's no way I'm going to stay where I'm at. Right. Like I'm, I literally am going to take the island or I'm going to die. Like it's just it's kind of insane to think that way. But like yeah, that, that's kind of yeah. how it is. It's like I am going to make this I work agree. or I'm going to be homeless or I'm going to be like, you know, like yeah. just put that here. Like you'll, you'll, you'll get it. You'll make it happen. Like if you start getting that fearful about stuff. So yeah, yeah that's mine. Well, I'll pick up on that then. I would say uh, I can tell you this that for me, I think it comes down with what Kyle said in the first question, and that is don't play with money you can't afford to lose. Because for me, I, you know, when I first started trading, I think it was like, it was, I don't know what trade it was. It was definitely like one of the first handful of trades I did. I was an idiot and I had a lot of money set aside. So I didn't care. And so I just took a trade and went in, you know, uh, quite a big size. And in like two minutes, I lost six grand. And when that happened, yeah, it it was like a gut punch. But then at the same time, it didn't really hurt because perspective, I it was money I could afford to lose. So if as long as whatever that money is for you, it doesn't matter the dollar amount. If it's a hundred dollars, if you have two thousand dollar account, then if you can afford to lose that money, then then you're going to be a lot more comfortable with taking those losses. Now, to granted, it sucks losing because once I got real serious, that was when I was gambling. Once I got serious about trading. It was stressful because you think you're getting good and then boom, you think you're getting good and then boom. So what helped me through that is, you know, watching people, you know, watching like Jack, like Jack was saying, know people who are doing well, get surround yourself by friends who are working on it too. Maybe people who are better than you. So that way you can stay motivated. Cause you're like, if, if Jack can do it, fuck yeah, I can do it. If Kyle can do it, hell yeah, I can do it. You know, like you just got to think that way and just keep pushing. Cause trading is not like a smart, intelligent game. It's just more of, psychology and, and and patience you just mm-hmm. gotta have patience that made, that made me think of two things i was like because imagine imagine if you couldn't afford to lose that money and you lost it right like imagine <laughs> like the anxiety and yeah. the like you, what would you do right you 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 would the odds of you then quitting would be so much greater because you couldn't handle that loss because you couldn't afford to lose that you know so that's why that's huge um yeah. <clears throat> and i love what you said about uh you know if you saw like jack making money or anyone else making money, like i can do that too that's exactly how I felt when I watched um, Tim Bertani's Trading Tigers DVD. Like, obviously, yes. he was making far amounts of money, but I was watching him take these trades, and he was so thorough with explaining the trade plan and like how the setup worked and why the setup worked. And I'm like, there's zero reason why I can't do that. 
you know what I mean? Like he just, he just, that DVD is like, like probably the best DVD of all time. I don't think there's any DVD that tops that one, but like just watching it, I was like, there's no reason I can't do what he just did. Like there's zero, yep. there's zero excuse why I can't do that. You know? So that really was like empowering and then, you know, ultimately got to where I am. So. I agree. I think that's the best DVD ever period for me. Yeah. For sure. For me and like how I stayed motivated was I didn't have a plan B. Like <laughs> I was 18, yeah. 19 years that's old. True. You know, I had terrible, terrible high school grades, and I just I couldn't do anything else. So it was exactly what Kyle was saying. Like, I was either going to be a successful trader or I was going to die. And just, like, that was yep. kind of my mindset. And still to this day, like, in, like to this day, you know, I have, like, two, three, four hundred dollars in my bank account. And I keep myself, like, I want to think that I'm poor because that's how – like I'll keep working really hard is like even when I was I know I had like 30 grand and I first started trading and I saved up all that money like I kept that all in my trading account and just solely focused on trading and growing that and that kind of keeps me motivated because I can't just look at my bank account and be like oh I got 30 grand in my bank account mm. like I can just kind of chill it's like no I have $200 in my bank account I have $300 in my bank account like I got to keep grinding I got to keep working I got to get successful at this, you know, and that's kind of what helped me the entire time. Absolutely. I think that's a good, I think basically you just stay hungry. You may just make yeah. sure you didn't, you made sure you didn't forget that, Hey, I'm doing this to, to grow more and more. And, you, and that's why you're going to keep growing. Another question from traders MX response. That's his name. Traders MX. How, how you track, how do you track your setups? Which criteria you choose? Like gap percentage, percentage gainers, volume. This is gonna be different for all of us. This is gonna be different for all of us. Yeah. Um, mine's simple. I just look at biggest percent gainers. I, actually, I look at stocks that are that I'm, I usually don't catch. I'm, I'm out on day one. I like to see day one uh, go huge. I like stocks that are up 50 50 percent plus. I'm a short seller, and then if it sets up nicely, then I put on my watch list. And then I would love it to go for another day or two, and then I'll short it. But if it gaps down the next day, then I'm all over it. That's just like one example, and and so that's one for me. Is he asking how you scan for stocks or how you track them? Like which criteria trades or which criteria do you choose? Like gap percentage. He gives examples like gap percentage. I think I'm thinking he's talking about um, like if you're going to track a strategy, what criteria do you track? Oh. How do you okay. try? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Wrong That's answer. That's good. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Kyle, kind of explain to them, like, because me and Kyle are kind of working on a, a, a database right now of some of the gappers and stuff. So, yeah. Kyle, you can kind of explain to them, like, a few things that we're looking at, maybe. Yeah. If um, So, yeah, when you when you want to track a setup, you have to, you, you want to find an edge. And, like, in the, and I'm going to try to do my best to explain this because, I remember in the beginning when I first started, like people talk about edge, get, get an edge, find an edge. I'm like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> like, what is that? What is that? Um, and so an edge is where you can see something repeat over and over again. And it's easy to read. It's easy to see. And you can get that through numbers. So like, you know, what we're tracking is we're trying to see like, it, can companies with dilution, how, how much... How much effect does dilution have on a company, right? So you say that's the setup you want to find out, right? And so if you're in a small cap land, there's plenty of companies with dilution, but you have to find out which ones are the best to short, when's the time, the best time to short them. And so you want to track like key levels. So where to gap to, right? If it opened up at this price, how big of a gap is that, right? Because then you can see stocks that gap under 20% aren't good. Stop, mm -hmm. Stocks that gap over 50% are great, right? You can start to we you know weed out which ones are good or bad so you want to get the open price the close the high the low just to get yeah. basic numbers that's just the first part you might then want to find out right dilution if you're looking for a stock to have dilution how much do they have right if they have a lot how much did it did it fall more percent did it pull back more than it spiked versus one that didn't have dilution you want to know the float you want to know the news what, what's the news good so like you know you essentially almost track not everything, but you want to get the key things. Like if, but you know, imagine if you didn't track and you show up on a random beta trade and you want to take, you want to make a trade plan. Well, what are the first things that come to your trade plan? What's my risk level, right? What's my thesis, right? What's all this stuff? Oh, you left. 
you want to track so much about what you're looking for. So when you get glad gather all the data together, you you know what's the average percent it's going to pull back. You know the percent of how high it's going to spike. Um, you have the percent of you know you know how maybe time frames like like how long how long does it take before a stock breaks down breaks down how long does it take for a stock to break out so you just track all you got to be very meticulous and track all these little things about something so that when you have the data together you know how to make the best possible trade plan that'll work 50 60 70 percent of the time on that setup right and, and if yep. you don't find anything then you don't have an edge right if, if there's not there's if there's not enough data to, to collect that shows that you can make money 60% of the time on a, with a three to one or two to one or four to one risk reward, then yeah, you don't have an edge. It's not there. So that's, that's how we do it. Absolutely. And I think uh, just to show an example, one thing that I, now that I can understand the question. So thanks Jack for verifying that I answered the wrong question. Uh, let me just show you an example. So I, I obviously I do track on Excel, but I also do this. Can you see the screen? So I also, yeah, yeah. I also track all of these different setups and I name them some like earnings. And then I'll take pictures of all these earnings winners, and then you know, you know, big closing, whatever. So that way, I, I'm a visual person, so I like to see what does the chart look like too. And then I look at my data, and then you'll end up finding things I like, I'll, you know, tracking things like first green day, close above fifty percent. You start to see what works, and, and you start to you know get the answers from your data. So this is just the answers, this isn't the actual data. But just a mm -hmm. just a second, that like I completely agree. I think it's so important. And you know what's crazy is when you actually decide to do that is when you really start to take ownership and you get way more confident over your setups, like totally. way more confident. Like, you're, you know, instead of just trusting, you know, Kyle saying this is the best setup, try it. Like you're going to believe him, oh, you're yeah. going to try it, but you'll feel way different if you found out that that was a setup. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Well, then uh, other than that, I do want to end it with one last question that we can just answer real quick. All yeah, of us can just it. answer like a short answer since we kind of got broken up here. But what is something you don't know? You, what is something you didn't know when you started that was so important? This is from Bambino Gambino. Some of these questions are hard to read, so that's just what it says. What, yeah, what, what is, didn't what we is know something that we you didn't know when you started was so important? So I'm guessing they're what they're trying to say. What is something you didn't know that was when you started that was so important? Yeah, important to know now, maybe. Yeah. I got something quick. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Stocks can move against you faster than you think. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Jesus. Oh, gosh. It's just like a, like a plaque on my wall. Like that I know. quote right there. A little bumper um, sticker. <laughs> so I wish I didn't, I didn't know. I mean, you everything. You lose all of your profits in one trade. And it's, yeah. And, and you hear that all the time. You're like, it'll never happen to me. But, it, it will happen. It's going to happen. And yeah. it sucks. But just know that everyone, every one of us on this video right here and people you admire who are on here all experience losses and they experience that black swan event where they've lost maybe a week's worth, two weeks, maybe a month. And it sucks, but it can happen. And that's something that was important for me to find out the hard way. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I was like, I'm just thought of like, what's something I wish I knew or how important it was to know? I think everything. <laughs> like I was so ignorant when I first started. It's like you just gotta be a sponge and learn everything. And that's why I say it's so good to trade when you start when you start trading with small size, because you know, if there's a mistake to be made in trading, there's a ninety nine point cent ninety nine point nine percent chance that you will make that mistake. Like like you said, like Alex said, like a big loss, it's coming. It's gonna happen. Yep. You know what I mean? So you either can learn from it with small size in the first year, because you're gonna experience the majority of mistakes in your first year if you trade every day. Um, or at least attempt to be trade every day. So just small size and being a sponge and absorbing all those mistakes as you make them is gonna you know make a world of a difference. So absolutely. Well, well, guys, look, I really appreciate y'all joining me today on Trader Therapy. This is gonna be an awesome episode. And again, thank you for listening for everyone who's listening in. And if you have questions, send us a, send either Jack, Kyle, myself questions, and we'll answer them on the next episode. And for the questions we haven't got to yet. We'll save that for the next episode as well. Again, thank you guys. All right, sounds good, man. Please, Please stop.